All right, we are back from the break, and the party has uh, moved back up to the, uh, the wizard's laboratory. Uh, Solus, you are scanning the room for traps, you said, correct? Yeah, I'm scanning the equipment and the room in general, uh, but the first equipment. Okay. Uh, you are not detecting any traps in the room. Okay. Okay, so uh, I do not detect any traps with the find trap spell. Right, Praxis says, let us know when you're ready to start getting us the fairy things out of the room. Do you want me to refresh your memories on what's here? Because I don't uh, recall you taking yeah. anything out from this room. Uh, we did take a few items that we have uh, we had handled uh, safely. You did take them uh, rather than leaving them? Like the skull and stuff. Okay, so yeah, you, like you took the, the, the skull with the gemstone the, embedded in it. Yeah, yeah there was a couple of potions. Small, small, uh, small something uh, else, wasn't there? Was it uh, some cat or something? Oh, yeah, like, the figurine. Yeah, figurine. The figurine and two potions, I think. That one on the table. All right. All right, so you got that right, written down. Uh, did I give you more detailed descriptions of them? Uh... Is that, was is that, um, but then it blew up the shelf. Was that the dwarf skull with dark green oblong gem? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got We've got like eight eight things there. Alright, read. I read. think I took the wax tablets. Okay. Uh then Tell me what you took. Okay, so it says... Oh, hang on. Just got a cough. Give me a second. <clears throat> yeah, didn't want to cough in everyone's ears. That's right. So it says three things on the table. A pair of wax tablets with odd raised marks on them. A glass flask of effervescent blue liquid. Not very good at saying that word. Uh, that says combat necromatic magic. And a glass flask of murky dark purple liquid with thought charm magic. Then we've got the dwarf skull, dark green oblong gem in the center of its forehead, thought necromantic magic. A two inch figure of a rabbit <sighs> carved carved of moonstone, elemental earth necromancy. That's the thing Braxton likes. Um, for, I don't know why, but he likes it. Um, then there's something else crossed out. Various jars, flasks with powders, that's crossed out. Oh, they exploded. Yeah. Right. Then there's a book uh, that says creation, enchantment, magic. Another book, question mark, enchantment. And a third book, minor magic of something. It says lever as well. don't know what that means. But if it says three books and it doesn't say what the book is... Pretty I sure you detected those. I'm pretty sure you detected the, those on the shelf but did not actually remove them, those books. Right. Should I yeah, read the No, leave them leave yeah. them written down because uh, that was that was information that you got from de that. detecting the magic, yeah. but you have not actually removed those from the shelf because that's on the other shelf, okay. the one that didn't explode. Yeah. Okay. Um and yeah, all right. So there there's one other thing that uh, it sounds like you did not actually uh, the the other stuff, the stuff that was like on the table and stuff like that. Um yeah, okay, you have that. That's fine. Uh, there was a latched wooden box up on top of one of the shelves that I don't believe you picked up then. Right. Because I don't recall you yeah. opening it. No, opened. I don't think no. we uh, did. Don't, okay. Don't remember. All right, so... Um, so but, but, no. but Braxton did pick up that rabbit because he was looking at the box. Yeah, and there are some carvings. There is some uh, writing carved in there that no one could figure out. So the dwarf skull, did anyone actually pick that up? Or is it still on the Laughter shelf? Laughter was handling it. Did he put Before it back? I, so to speak, Laftal's got it, but he's not got it, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, it's in the party loop, but Laftal was the one holding onto it before it exploded. Okay. Yeah, Laftal right. was interested in that. All right. Okay, so um, basically all that's uh, left is that uh, latched uh, box on top of the uh, first shelf and uh, all the books that are on that first shelf. None of those are detecting as uh, being trapped. Is the latch box on the top shelf? Uh, it's on top of the shelf. So if you think of the shelf as being a, basically a, 
wooden box. The top of it is flat. Oh, right. And it's just on, sitting on top, on top of the bookcase. Yeah, on top of the bookcase. Right. Now, yeah. can find traps scanned through objects. So, do we only have yes. one row of books left? Uh, it's multiple rows of books, but it's a it's a shelf full of books. These, these are pretty narrow shelves, so you're only getting like uh, three or four books. Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit more than that um, per row. Well, since nothing detects as a trap. Oh, uh... so. So that means when that explosion happened, it took out maybe four, five, six books. Um, it specifically took out. Let's see, because that that shelf had a lot of spell components and stuff on it. Right. Oh, well, that's fi that's fine for Braxton. Uh, what what see. what what Braxton's trying to figure is he probably won't be able to benefit from the books, but Braxton's wondering. If there is a way, once we get the other items off, All right, if real, there is real a way fast, to try and so, save some books. So the first shelf is just books. The second shelf that exploded had a dozen books and uh, a variety of uh, jars and stuff like that, and that has all been ruined and destroyed. So the first shelf that is full of books is intact. And it, I, I misspoke when I said three or four. It should, I should have said more like uh, nine, ten per right. per row kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Alright, so, um, Solus, you are not detecting any uh, traps on any of those. Okay, so I will very carefully uh, try and take a book from the uh, uh, highest shelf. So, was there only two bookshelves? Yeah. Are right. you? So we've lost half the books? No. Because the second shelf only had a dozen books. This one has more than a dozen books. Oh, right, right. But the other side of the room had some shelves on as well, didn't it? There were just two shelves. Right, so yeah. two shelves on one wall, and the other stuff had no books with it. Is that right? I mean, there were no books on any of the tables. Right, okay. So I mean, we just have one collection of books that we might be trying to save. Yeah, I mean, okay. there's a there's a bunch of, like, wizard's laboratory paraphernalia around, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, Braxton, possible. Braxton, Braxton was primarily thinking to the others that we need to get the loose items out and see if we can... Um, did anyone ever play Kaplunk? <laughs> when, when there was these uh, people... Stretch out to get the books back. Uh, then she says, uh, "Maybe we should get the other items first. So if it yeah, it that's explodes, a good idea. Then, then, then we have the other items gone." I have a general divination spell that will allow me to know, or maybe guess at what will happen if we were to intend upon an action. But we so, have to follow that intended action, otherwise, okay. my magic would not have been for anything. Well, how only about... act within 30 minutes of it happening. Well, uh, you about... could uh, ask it uh, if uh, what would happen if uh, someone were to move those books. Yeah, I was going to say, if we move all these books out within the space of half an hour, is that possible first? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, like, you could just take them off the yeah, shelf and, and then... put them on, pile them on the table, for example. My, my algorithm would be basically what would happen from removing all the books out of this room. Okay. You want to cast that now? Yeah. Okay. But we have to be pretty intent on doing this. Yeah. Well, so Lars is pretty intent on uh, remo taking the Bra books if Bra possible. Braxton, Braxton says, hang on, a, hang on a second, let's just have a quick look at the books. Nobody touch them. Is there any gaps between those books? Or... Uh, no more than you would expect, given the fact that all these books were clearly created by different people. Yeah. They're different sizes and stuff like that. Well, Brax is casting Augury. Bra Braxus is, uh, has, has left or started casting his spell yet? Uh, I, I would s assume that if you say, hold on a second, uh, then yeah, you I'm not. I'm waiting hold to off casting the spell ready. until you okay. said what so, you were saying. So Bra Braxus nudges, nudges left or before he starts. The invisible says, left, oh yeah. He's invisible? Yeah, he's been oh, invisible for a while, strangely enough. Oh, fair enough. Okay, so... Braxton turns the wrong way and talks the wrong way at Bra at Laftal when he's behind him. Laftal's like, over here. 
<laughs> okay, so left uh, Braxton turns around again and uh, sort of waves his arms about a bit and says, "You're quite good at sleight of hand." Can't see I'm wondering, when you're invisible. I'm wondering if there would be a way once we move the other items out of the room to try to pull individual books. I don't know if that would change your question. Because how many books is there left, Old? It's a bookshelf full. I mean... Uh... So like nine or ten? No, no, more than that. Um... You're because probably... I thought you said there's nine or ten per row. Right. And there's more than one row. Oh, because well, I thought probably you looking said at... one row exploded. No, one shelf exploded. An entire bookcase. Sorry. Right. Here in the U.S., we we will often refer to a bookcase as a shelf. And also right. the individual shelf as a shelf. Yeah, yeah, that's what's Sorry. confusing me. I'm, yeah. I'm so so there's me well. two bookcases. Two bookcases. One of the so bookcases one... explode. exploded. So the whole the whole bookcase exploded? Yeah. I mean, it was taken out by the explosion. It was ruined by the explosion. My apologies. No, that's that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, um, it's just, uh, you're you're, you're well. looking at you're looking at about forty books, probably give or take. Let that are yeah. left. Okay, well, Brax does need to know the right man, but but Bra Brax is basically going to say to Laftor, "We we've got a few dozen books there. I'm wondering, it, with your ability to to move things carefully." whether you can plot a route of what books can be pulled out so that it we can get matter. books. Well, do you think all the, the purposes of my like... divination... The thing is, if I do a different course other than what I'm going to... I'm going to yeah. say, ask my deity for guidance to see right. what would happen if I were to take all the books out normally. That right. would give an indication if something bad would happen that may not be picked up by traps. Yeah, real fast, you don't actually have to have an intent to do it kind of thing. I mean, obviously there is some intent if you're asking it, but it's... it's what would happen yeah, if... Yeah, it's literally, what would happen if we do this course of action? Uh, if the, the divination says, yeah, that might be a bad idea, essentially, then you can choose not to do that. Okay. Yeah, we've got to figure out why that's going to happen. So, your deity couldn't advise you if one row of books was dangerous and another was safe. I would have to ask my deity what would happen if I take only that row of books. I'm saying okay. the entire room because we can do the entire room. Okay, I mean, so yes, it might and if your point to says... like the other wall might be included and in, might be yeah. trapped, but if we're doing the whole room, then yeah, I don't know where the trap is because I never specified. So if your deity said that removing all the books would, would cause an explosion, would you be able to ask your deity again if removing no. one particular shelf was safe? I would have to ask... I would have to sleep and get another spell. Right. I but we could do that. If we, if, we, if we knew that removing all the books was dangerous, you could come yeah. back and relearn this spell and ask, if necessary, wow. ask for each individual book. Well, I mean, it would take a lot of spells if you were going to ask for each individual. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to do each, but, 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 by, be done but by, by process case. of elimination, if we learnt that the bottom row of books wouldn't cause a problem if we took them out, we could do that. There's no guarantee that my spell always works either. Oh, okay. Well, All right, this sounds good to me. Accounts. I will, I will stop disturbing you then and allow you to cast your spell. I just thought maybe you might want to modify the question. No, it's. All I can do is a general one, or I have to be specific afterwards on another day. Okay. Do we so, um, do we hear anything when Laftal casts a spell? He's muttering words, rolling some dice that may become visible. Suddenly. And you do have to um, vocally ask the question and then go through the process. Yeah. And he so uses I, dice, so yeah. Yeah. I roll the dice on after chanting the spell into the desk. I say, what will happen? What, what will happen? 
what will happen when we remove all the books from this room? Okay. Uh, and let's see. Brax is going to stare at those dice and see if he can figure out what it means. So you um, you examine the uh, positioning and placement of the dev the the device uh, the dice and uh, what they've uh, rolled, and you interpret the uh, response to be little danger awaits if you remove the books from this chamber. Uh, all right, then I say there'll be little danger from moving the books as in that could mean one of the books are trapped that could also mean someone might trip up when carrying a book out of room okay mm. or someone could get a paper paper cut yeah there's little danger I mean nothing's free from danger so that would always be a default I think that would All be right. my interpretation well let's let's take the other stuff out and then let one person take out a book at a time. Who's you're? You're if pretty good go at lifting things up. Outside of our general intended course, that my divination would not be true. My divination was to say all the books are in the room. So we have to yeah. go upon that intent of action, not in a, not doing but, any particular. Yeah, if you like do something, moving you... one book at a time, that's going out of it. Yeah, if you do really? something else other than what he asked. Uh, the response may not apply. Yeah, but so surely we have surely... to remove all the books. That's, well, that's a divination. You, you don't surely have to remove. Hold, hold on a second. You don't have yeah. to. You don't have to remove all the books. It's just that he specifically asked if there was any danger in removing all of the books. And if the course of the the period of time is thirty minutes. So if you do something other than that specific thing, the response may not apply. It may still apply. But it may not. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to right. do that. It is just an advisory spell. That's what this mm -hmm. is. But, so keep that in but mind. surely if your deity says it's not dangerous to remove all the books within little half danger. an hour. Well, right, little oh, danger. What? But surely we could remove each book one at a time into the next room. Here, here's, a, here's an example. Uh, maybe there is some sort of uh, spell on two of the books that if they are separated for more than a certain amount of time, both of them explode in a, a massive conflagration for 20 d uh, 20 points of damage. That's true. The spell, his question would not have taken that into account. His question. That's so true. So that's, that's my uh, example. Now, I chose a patently ridiculous example... So that you don't, don't think means you are using it. <laughs> I've I've seen a movie where people were wearing collars that made your head blow up if you. That's a lot of damage. I don't think Flex is going to deal with that. <laughs> I've so, got injure heat. I reduced ten of that damage. So the point is, is that if you stray from what what it it did, if you uh, only remove half of the books, uh, there may be more danger. There may not be. But that's yeah. just keep that in mind. So that was the question. Okay. So, yeah, I think Solas is going to follow the augury. Yeah. He's just remove the books. Yeah, let's just yeah. go and remove the books. All right, are you going to be looking at them uh, like the covers as you're doing Don't so? Don't read them. Not They're now. Not we can do that later. Yeah, we can we do that later. We inherently know reading the words on the books can cause effect. Well, I didn't mean looking inside them. I meant looking at the covers. Mm -mm. No, I not even that. No. no. Uh, yeah, so last, so last, piles the books uh, neatly in the. Uh, this is. The, this is when we pick up. The, this is when we pick up the book riddled with woodworm and take it back to our ship. Some of us should words. know that reading words, even stuff on the outside of a book, can set stuff off. Yeah. So it's a case of don't read the book, don't look at the book. Place them in a box, place them in a chest uh, that we've got does, near the room. That, uh, <laughs> it's like the weeping that, angels here. That, does that uh, actually apply on, if it's not reading out loud? It does, yes. Mentally reading yes, okay. it, does, yeah. it does apply. Yeah, However, uh, like, just glancing at it, uh, 
may or may not uh, constitute re reading. Like, well, I remember when 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 uh, Higamus sort of glanced into a book and the book blew up on him. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. even have to send to look at a single letter and boom. Yeah, that he happened to Lafto. He lost his dagger. He couldn't even read. He couldn't even read it. You know, he just looked Bra into it. Braxton's still going to his book reading anonymous meetings. <laughs> so, so are you taking precautions against this, like blindfolding no, this... or something like that? No. <laughs> no, just... no. No. We're just actively trying not to read. Them. Okay. We're just putting them in the containers. I'm, I'm, I'm following the augury, and that's enough. Mm-hmm. It's a general guideline. Okay. Uh, in the process of doing that, uh, you realize that most of them are... Uh, have some sort of writing on it that is uh, tactile in nature, uh, i.e. it's based on like raised or depressed things. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you could feel that, certainly. Uh, it's a lot of braille. Something similar to that, yeah. Um, similar to what was on the wax tablets that uh, Solus took from the table. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some that are not. Um, somewhere around a dozen are not. And at least one of those was written in, uh, had a cover uh, title in common but you did not know and read it, because you were specifically saying that you were not reading it. So you've gotten that them all mean... out of the room. Mm -hmm. I mean, that didn't mean that we never read them, it just means that I know. we didn't read them while uh, yes. taking them out. I know. Mm -hmm. So now, if you want to read that, the cover, or look at the other covers that are not clearly written in this tactile, uh, tactile script... Uh, that uh, you would kind of realize is probably the Illithid written language. So, some of these mm -hmm. books were uh, magic, if I remember correctly, so I will cast Detect Magic to separate those, uh, those into different uh, places. Alright, there are three that radiate magic. Yeah, I remember that. Are they like spell books? Most likely. I mean, no one said that they. You, you guys are specifically saying that you were avoiding reading them, so mm, you don't know. Do you want I'm to start looking at the other books now? I'm basically yes. going through the books in the in this room. Yes. Okay. Let's so rest, rest of the group, rest of the group yeah. can go through. If the you're library. reading a book, take it out and go to another room. Yeah. Well, you've I'm already basically... taken all the books out of the room. Yes, Do not yeah. be near That's... the other books when we read a book. To make that clear, that's what we're doing. Okay, so you're taking one book at a time to try and read it. Yeah, yeah and we take it back. And right. let's separate them, uh, sort them into books that look like uh, they're small books and, uh, so, and so, books so, that, so, uh, that look normal because uh, Leva has uh, memorized one Comprehend Languages and one Read Magic. So she can actually go through and check it out. So, so as a librarian knows how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, there's, on, there's giving points. Hold, hold on, hold on. There's a uh, a dozen or so, give or take, that are not written in the uh, tactile script, and three of those mm -hmm. are detecting as magic. Oh. So, mm -hmm. what do you want to start with? And I, I'm assuming that Solus, you're the one that wants to start with this. Yeah. Okay. I'm. Uh... I'm basically, I'm not reading those magic books, but uh, magical books. But I'm basically putting them in a separate container, and uh, then I'm going through the common books that were not magical. Okay. Do you want me to uh, give a brief description of what they look like? What those other ones look like? Yeah, you can give a brief description. Okay. Um, one of them has a maroon cover. Uh, one of them has a dark blue cover. Uh, one of them has a thick leather cover and uh, thin woody pages. Uh, another one has a black leather binding. 
Uh, another one is uh, large and heavy, uh, heavy leather bound with uh, thick rough parchment pages. Uh, and that one on the cover has no writing, uh, but it does have a uh, rectilinear Ouroboros. So rather than curved, it's square and blocky uh, serpent uh, eating its tail. Um, another one with uh, dark green covers. Um Another one with a black cover and gold scroll work. And one with uh, plain boiled leather covers, and the title, which you have not read, is clearly written in common. Okay. Uh, will you... or can you send me those descriptions uh, later on? Yes, of course. Okay. Good. Thank you. And... and... This, is, this is specifically so can... for you choosing which one you want to look at right now. Uh, I'm... Uh, and I did not include the three that are re detecting as magical. Yeah. Those those are uh, in the yeah. previous room. I'm going to check first the uh, one with that uh, Ouroboros. Okay. Um, the uh, cover also has uh, three interlocking circles on it uh, within a larger circle in the center of it. There's no title on it at all. Okay. I... I will, uh... briefly look uh, at the first page. Alright. Uh... You open it up and, uh... take a look. Um... As you do so, uh... the, the words kind of, like, swim before your eyes, uh and you get a little bit of a headache. You feel like you'd really need to, to sit down and concentrate to uh, actually see what this says. I will try that. Okay. Give me a second. Do I need to roll anything? Uh, it seems that, uh, so this is going to take a while of you trying to read this one. Mm-hmm. Um, does anyone else want to do anything while he's doing this? Um, do any of those books have an interesting shape? Any of the books that Braxton brought out? Not really, they're all rectangular. Right. Okay, uh, Braxton's going to go back and have a the bookshelves. Oh, there's a box on top of the bookshelves. Yeah. Um, can Braxton carefully lift that down? Yeah. Does it go bang? No. Okay, Braxton's going to bring that out and say, should I bring this out into the room or check it for traps? Well, I found traps. Didn't find any traps in it. And uh, Detect okay. Magic didn't all right, uh, Braxton. Yeah, that's magic last time someone scanned that room. Braxton, a go. Um, everyone's out here now, are they? Uh, I'm only there. Yeah. Uh, Ocker's still uh, guarding the door in case anything comes. Everyone else is still inside this room after having taken all the books out. Well, they were with the well, three where, magic where, books. Where, where, is the, where is the stuff we just took out? Is it here? I assume it's just outside uh, here. It's yeah. just outside there. All right. Okay, so Braxton will go somewhere else on his home with that box. Um, like here. There's nothing else in here, is there? Not really, no. Okay, Braxton will care. Was there a table or anything Braxton could put that box on? Nope. Okay, Braxton will gently put that on the floor and turn it so that it's facing away from him and then open it up and see if anything happens. Okay. Uh, so you unlatch the uh, lid and uh, lift it up? Yeah. You're, you're lifting the lid towards you so that it's... No, no, he wants to, he wants to face it away from him. Right, that's so what I mean. So, so the, hinges, the hinges are close to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. Inside that... Um, 
you see a kind of resting on uh, some fabric uh, and protecting them from too much are some uh, various uh, containers with liquid. Hey! Hey, there's some... Uh, it might be magic potions or something. And there actually do appear to be labels on them. Right. So Rax is not going to be... He's not going to read the labels in case there are uh, explosive runes or anything. But he's going to gently shut it, and then he's going to come out and say, uh, how, about how many potions was it? Uh, there were four well, containers. Right. So Braxton says there's four things that might be potions or, or poison or something. So last uh, doesn't pay got any attention on. since he's concentrating on the book. All right. He's going to carry on going and look for Laftal. <laughs> look for the invisible Laftal. <laughs> say, say, Leftal, you're uh, you're interested in uh, containers mm. with liquids in. Uh, real fast, Leva. Um, um, he didn't say that he was being quiet about it. So yeah, I mean, everyone would have heard this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd have heard that if you want to go check well. it out. Yeah, then Leva casts Detect Magic and goes and has a look at those potion potions. All right, give me a second. What are you going to ask me anyway? Uh, oh, I I found some. I found that box. Oh right. I opened it up. I opened it away from me in case it was going to blow up. I put so it in that other idea. room opposite. So there's there's some there's some little vials in there. I know you're interested in all these liquids. You you, you keep trying to siphon liquids out of poisonous creatures and things. I don't know if any of these will be anything right. you're interested in. So there is a uh, there are two glass flasks, a steel flask, and a ceramic flask inside there, and they are labeled. Mm-hmm. Labeled and, and uh, Leva detect magic. Oh, he didn't. He didn't read them. Um, they are radiating magic. Any specific type? I'm getting to that. Hold on a second. What was it? Two glass, one steel, and one. And one ceramic. Oh yeah. Did uh, when I cast the detect magic? Did any of those books uh, radiate any spheres? Um, I believe I gave them to you already. Uh, last time it was a uh, mage to detect magic, if I remember correctly. But no one casts casted clerics to detect magic on them. Read me back what's written down on your notes, then. For the books, specifically. Braxen. We didn't get it. We did Sorry? it. Sorry? Quick, we missed out on the books. I'm pretty sure I gave you this information, so I want to double check. Uh, but you gave the information, there. but you were too quick, and he didn't uh, get the information written down. Yeah, yeah. When you said all the books, um, I mean the three uh, magic books. What, what they radiated? No, no, oh no, hang on, hang on. Um, oh, we have one book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got. And we have one book, no, unknown enchantment, and we have one book, minor magic of something. Wait, um, Which is the same do, as... Wait, hold, hold on, hold on, read, read, what was that again? Uh, one creation enchantment. Uh, the second one was uh, question mark enchantment, unknown and enchantment. And the third one was minor magic of something for both Leva and, uh, and uh, Laftal, I think it was. Alright, um, oh, okay. so yeah. Did. Yeah, you, you did get the uh, series on one, one of them failed, uh, so... I, I would need you guys to go up a level before it's going to detect something else again. Okay. I I just remembered that Leva casted can, a detect magic. We... I didn't remember that Laftal had casted also. So, can uh, um, can any of our helmsmen do detect magic? Uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna say that a failure is a failure for everyone in that kind of re regard, so that I don't just ha have. Uh, a round robin of four different people <laughs> casting spells until you figure it out. <laughs> you guys have so many spell casters that it would, to a certain extent, make most of these things um, automatic success eventually. And I don't want that. So we can't have like a row of ten people. <laughs> like a little yeah, conga line. Okay, well, so... can't we have, like, a ritual? Potions. A ri ritual. <laughs> right. Anyway, I'll let you carry on. So, Leva, you're casting this, so let's see. Um, the first... Are you also reading the labels when you are looking at them for magic? 
Yes, I definitely would do that. Okay. It's, it's written words. Written words are there to be read. Okay. Uh, so the first one, the ceramic flask, uh, uh -huh. the label reads Wound Restoration, and you are detecting necromancy magic. Mm -hmm. The second one, uh, you are detecting enchantment charm, and the label reads, this is the steel flask, by the way, uh, Tyke's uh -huh. Boon. I'm sorry, Tyke's? Tyke, T-Y-C-H-E. Okay, Boon. Yep. Uh -huh. uh, third one, <clears throat> that is a, uh, it's a coppery colored liquid in a glass flask. That one is radiating necromancy, and it uh, reads Death's Foe. Hmm. Interesting. Defy death for a while. And the fourth one, also in a glass vial with a, um, uh, it's a thick liquid, the color of red apples. Uh, and the label reads Starvation Bane. And it radiates necromancy. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, give me just a second. Okay, so uh, let me just make notes on that, that you've detected them. Uh, the Do you have it written down for the other potions that were on the table? Just a second. I have, yes, I have uh, Glass Flask, Evervescent Blue Liquid, Combat Necromancy, and Glass Flask, Murky Dark Purple Liquid, Thought and Charm. Okay. Uh, keep in mind that uh, if it's Enchantment or Charm, that's technically Enchantment slash Charm. That's that's the, the school. Mm -hmm. so, so don't think that Enchantment and Charm are two different things. They're interchangeable. Just so you know. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, with that, uh, having looked at um, Solus, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's taken you a bit to uh, kind of muddle through what this book is uh, uh, saying. Um, and... It seems to, to start out by indicating that, the, that it contains a series of uh, mental exercises. Okay. And directions on how to perform them. Okay, I will keep this book and uh, read it later on. Okay. I will uh, then check the book that has a uh, title in common. Okay. Uh, that one... Um, just make sure that that's the only one that is written in common. Yeah, that's the only one that uh, is written in common. Um, so you take a look at that. That has a plain boiled leather cover with uh, the title. Uh, it's burned into it like a... Um, I don't know. Yeah, have you guys ever done any of that that burning into leather stuff? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's it's done that way, uh, and it reads life's energies and how to manipulate <clears throat> them. Ooh, fun. Okay, so I'm guessing this is a study book on necromancy, or perhaps healing. Need to check inside it to be certain, but <laughs> I will I will uh, put it in the pile to be checked. Checked carefully later on, if okay. if possibly needing needing to be destroyed. 
Wow. Wow, destruction of uh, of knowledge. I mean, ne ne necromancy is something that uh, is uh, not uh, knowledge that should be shared. Uh, I mean, Ogma would be very against that because he uh, has necromantic law keepers in the society where he comes from. Well, that's something for you guys. That's something for you guys to discuss uh, later. Um. Uh, all right. Yeah. Then I will check the first book, the one with maroon cover. Yeah. Okay. Have we have we checked in with our uh, dwarves that are at the bottom of the stairs recently? Uh, if you want to say that you have, that's perfectly fine. Like when you you stop by to to let them know I that mean, you're coming back here after you uh, looking it. at the tombs. I mean, yeah. Well, I'm just thinking if we're going to spend a lot of time. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time in here looking through these books. We we might want to just get someone to pop back and give them the heads up. I mean, you would have. I, I if you want to say that you you did that beforehand, that's fine. I mean, like before you went back here. So it would still only be you're still only looking at like at an hour at most so far. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's okay. I just I just figured I didn't hear anyone say it, and someone could just pop back now. We did see them when Okar called to us to that secret door. You can also oh, we send. Can you can also send someone right now if you want. Varadra yeah. will go. Let them know what what's going on if you want. Do you want that? All right, taking that as a no. All right, so um, that maroon cover book. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the script on that you don't recognize, uh, it is written in, it is multicolored though, and, uh, it's kind of a, a tight, uh, small script, um, as if written by, uh, small hands or something like that. Uh, you do not recognize the language and you cannot read the, uh, cover. Okay. Well, I will put it in the side, put it to the side uh, to read later when I memorize uh, memorize my language spell. Okay. And I will check the next book. Okay, that one is. Uh... That has a dark blue cover, and that is also written in the same uh, multicolored script. Um, and the uh, below that script is a non-geometric design of some some sort that you're not sure about. Okay, I will put that in the same pile with the book before. Okay. Then I will go to the next book. Okay. Um... This one is also written in a script that you don't recognize, not the same as the first two. Um, mm -hmm. It's somewhat reminiscent of uh, some of the writings back on in Brawl's Shoutown, but uh, it's larger and it's a bit more... Um, the lines are thicker and uh, broader edged and stuff like that. Okay. I will uh, put it uh, next to the pile of those two books that were uh, in that other script. Alright. And check the next next spell, uh, next book, not not spell book. Alright. Just a second. Um. Mm -hmm. Braxton's gonna say to. Uh... To Varadra, Higamus, Finn, and, and Leftal, that uh, he wants to have a look behind this bookshelf, and they might want to pop out the door in case it blows up. Higamus uh, asks if you want some help. Uh, let me try first on my own, right. uh, just in case it's a trap. And if it doesn't blow up, but I can't move it, uh, I'll ask you to come back in. All right. So Higamus and Varadra head out of the room. Leftal. Do you want to go out the room? Yeah. 
Well, that's what I'm going to do. All right. So you go to uh, move the uh, bookshelf, Braxton, and... Yeah, he's going to try and gently... He's you know, like when you walk it. heavy furniture? Yep. He's going to try and walk it a little bit and right. then try to look, glance behind it, see if there's anything behind it. Okay. Uh, Solus, are you looking at the uh, fourth book? Mm-hmm. All right, so this one has black leather binding, and it is also written in the same language as the first one. Okay, I will put it in the same pile. All right. Uh, Braxen, um, it moves pretty easily. It's pretty heavy, but uh, you're able to uh, take care of it just fine. Uh, you shift it. How far are you willing to... Did you want to move it initially? Well, initially it'd be like an inch or so so that he can just glance at it. Okay. And if he can't see anything obvious, he'll just sort of open it a bit like he would open the door, like right, about right, 45 right. degrees. Right. Um, all right, doing so, um, you don't see anything behind it, just a, a plain stone wall. Right. Is there any pictures on this wall or anything? Uh, no. Any He's damage on the back of the book bookshelf where where that explosion happened? Uh, was this the one that exploded, or was this the uh, the one that you just took all the books off of? I I assumed it was the one that you took all the books off of. Oh right. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it'd be the ones we just taken the books off. Okay. Sorry. Um, no, there's no damage to it. It's a fairly plain bookshelf. Yeah. Um, although looking at especially the back, you would guess that this was removed from a ship at some point. Yeah, it's not worth probably not worth us taking up the stairs, is it? Is it in not really. Nick? I mean, it's it's serviceable, but it's no nothing special. Yeah. All right. Braxton makes a note to tell the um the our lizard people that that's okay. here. All right. Um, Solus, you're looking at the next book. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you read Dwarven? Uh, not yet. Okay. Um. That has dark green covers, and uh, you recognize the script on the cover as Dwarven. Okay. Do you want I will to ask it. Varadra to read that? Yeah, I ask Varadra to read it. The Dwarven Book of Dogmatic Methods. Okay. <laughs> Wait, isn't that working in red in any language? It was uncommon. Uh, I'd have to go back and look to see what I wrote down for that. I don't remember. Um... So you uh, ask, you call Varadra over and ask her to tell you what it says on the cover. Mm hmm And she says, uh, that says studies on the cursed spirits. I see. Well, I will put it in the pile of uh, studying on later if it's uh, something, uh, something that is... Uh... Good or bad knowledge. Wow, so judgmental. All right, um, the next one that you want to look at? Yeah, I will look at the next one. Okay, that one has a black cover with gold scroll work. Can you read Elvin? I can. All right. Uh, that one, the title is Mystica Abjurato. Okay, so I'm guessing it's... Abju abjuration magic uh, study book or something but doesn't contain spells. Uh, correct. I will check inside. Alright. Uh, yeah, so it is a book on um, various... Uh, it's, a, it's a theory book. Uh, it's pretty heavy, you know, it, it's, it's pretty densely written kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. heavy topics and stuff like that, but it would definitely be of aid in any sort of uh, abjuration-type magic study that you well, might you might Well, have. I mentioned, Leva, that we found a new book for our library. Nice, nice, nice. Was there it's, any, were any books you couldn't read? Yeah, these, these books, I point to those two piles that I haven't been able to read. And... Uh, Leva has comprehend languages, she could quickly cast that and have a quick look at the titles. If you Okay. Want. I'm okay with that. Right. I, I, will put, uh, I, I think will that's put, a uh, specific language, though. 
like one language, not all languages. Let me double check. I will put the theory book on abjuration uh, on the side uh, so that uh, it's a protected and that, that we are adding it to our library. Oh. <laughs> Thing is, we get all these like odd books, odds and sods, but what does it actually entail, so to speak, when it comes to researching spells, for example? Not much. It's mostly flavor. All right. So I, don't I mean, I may, I may choose. I may choose to say. Well, I not. may choose to say. Um, if you're researching a a spell, and I know that I have uh, not given you something on a topic, or if I just want to make your life harder, I am the dungeon master. All, after all, that is my job. Um, I may say <laughs> that you need, you, your your library does not have appropriate books on a topic. However, if you have. Mm kept these and detail them, then this this would definitely uh, um, hmm. cover quite a bit of abjuration stuff. At yeah, least I, I would think it would be helpful if you, one were to research I mean, spells it, containing abjuration effects. It's, it's not the kind of thing that it's going to speed it up in any way, but it will prevent me from saying, no, you don't have any books on that topic, you're going to have to go out and buy or find one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are like really so, heavily specialist knowledge books now. I mean, it's it's this one. I mean, th there's only two that you've gotten uh, that you've been able to read so far. Um, the one in Elvish mm -hmm. and the one in Common, uh, which Solus has not looked into the one in Common. I can read Elvish. Well, Solus looked into the one that was in Elvish. Oh, you can read Elvish, can you? Yeah. Huh. I suppose from another point of view, if there was a particular book that all told you about and you was interested in you could do research into that specific book and then from a role-playing point of view he'd tell you what was in it rather than doing research of all your books no what i mean is um if if they're like if if one of the one of you players wanted to research a uh protection scroll or a uh a new abjuration spell. Um, if you hadn't gotten this book, I might say, "All right, your your library doesn't have sufficient coverage of this topic. You're going to need to go out and find a book." Yeah. However, yeah. now that you have this, uh, I will probably not do that specifically with abjuration. Now, there might be some other element, like if you want to find, you know, create a scroll of protection from poison. Maybe I'll say, "Okay, now you need to find a uh, scholarly tome on." Poisons. I was working on making that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this could be basically compared to the real world if you were, uh, say, uh, trying to create some uh, chemical solution and uh, you had a book of uh, basic chemistry in your library that would yeah. basically help you. Didn't we find an alchemical one? I believe so, yes. From radar, yeah. I, I would hope that you've written some of these things down. Um, but but again, specifically, this is none of Not these things are going to improve your chances or speed up spell research or magic item research. All it they do to... is prevent me from saying your library on this topic is not big enough, and you need yeah. to go out and find more. <laughs> Which is another way of saying you don't know. This is what. But uh, the, you're right. It's it's one My written text. Sheet. But is there? Uh, uh, they were asked, Solas, uh, hey, is there one yeah. language that is very unlikely to be readable by anyone here, on one of the books? Because well, uh, I, I could try and. Uh, I I that. will I will uh, show the pile that has uh, multiple books. The very with the very colorful full script. Um, mm -hmm. real fast. First, uh, did you want uh, Viradra? to like take a glance inside that uh, one that she read and let you know what you know gen general idea of what is inside well yeah she can take the general look okay i'm okay with that uh so that book is uh would be useful for necromantic magics research uh but specifically with regards to um you know the non-corporeal undead either protecting against them or uh, you know things of that nature. So, um, well, that's that's a good book to know how to protect against undead. 
I mean, it would also be useful to someone who wants to control or create them, but that's obviously not what it's intended for. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and did you want to look at the one that you were able to read, Solus? Yeah, while well, I can check the pile of those, uh, was it three books that was, were written in that same script? Yes, and then there's a fourth one that's written in a different script. Yeah. Um, so that one, uh, again, clearly uh, useful for necromantic uh, spell research. While it is pretty clearly written from the uh, standpoint of someone who might be wanting to harm people with it, you certainly could use that knowledge to create protections against such harm. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Nice. Yeah, that's why Laughter was grabbing various dead things to create like a scrum of protection against dead or something. And then, mm -hmm. Like those Draco Lich scales and bones and stuff. Isn't that what you did with the poisons too? Yeah, but also they expire because I got no way of preserving them. <laughs> I think I no, actually I think I have one that's in my dagger. Does my dagger preserve the poison? Magic uh, preserve it. Because I have one giant it venom. It seems to, yes. That's still in the dagger. Yeah, it seems to. Alright, so uh, you have four books, three written in the same script and one written in a different script, and yes, you can only look at one of those. Mm -hmm. So I take the one where there are three books in one script. I check the titles of each book first. You can't check the titles of each one. You can only understand one written text. I thought there were three with the same script. Yes, but Comprehend Languages doesn't work that way. It's uh, um, specifically one, one written material. Uh... Let's see. Um, so it's area of effect one speaking creature or written object. Written text, yes. So, okay, so you would be able to of... understand that one specific book. Okay. And you, yeah, it, it would not impart knowledge of, of who wrote it unless they said in there mm -hmm. what it was. All right. Okay. All right, so you cast Comprehend Languages, and which one were you going to uh, choose? One of the three, or one, or the uh, the one isolated? One of the three. Okay. Um, there was one with a maroon cover, one with a uh, dark blue cover, and a non-geometric design below the script, and uh, one with... Geometric design. Okay. And the other one had black leather binding. Okay, so you cast uh, Detect Magic, uh, I mean Comprehend Languages on that one. And that one, the title reads Necromantica Magnifica. Oh. Uh, and again, this is clearly a... Would you glance inside to get a, a, a feel for what the material is? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, clearly, it's a necromantic book. Um, and it's primarily written about powerful necromantic uh, magics. Uh, so this would be more useful in terms of high-level magic. Mm -hmm. I passed it on to Solas, so he has more knowledge about that. Okay. I will uh, mental, make mental note on uh, what book that is. But also, Lema will cast a comprehend... Not, not comprehend, what, what's it? Read magic for the three books that... Uh, that tested as uh, magical. Okay. And they also in the separate room. Alright. Um, so you, there were those three books. There was uh, one that had a gray leathery cover uh, and stiff leathery pages. There was one that um, had a stiff, hard, off-white cover and pages of yellowed paper, and I misplaced the other one. Um, the third one, the covers are made of ivory plaques and bound with, uh, uh, bound and hinged with gold and silver. Hmm. 
So that's the first one. That's the one that you want to look at first? Yes. Okay. The title for, if there is a title, the title first, and uh, if there isn't, then the first page. There, There is no title whatsoever on it. It is just, like, looking at both covers, it is just plain white uh, ivory plaques uh, with the uh, bindings on the edge of gold and silver. Mm-hmm. So she looks at the first page. Okay. All right. Let me uh, see uh, something real fast. According to the uh, compendium, the, the read magic actually works differently. It's just two two rounds per level. Yes. And, and uh, she should be able to read all, all uh, I mean, read, as long as it's valid, uh, active, she should be able to read all three books. Yeah, if you want to look at the covers on them. Yes. All right. Well, I mean, she certainly wants to see the, whether there's title on any of the three. If okay. there isn't, then she wants to look at the first page. Okay. All right, so... Um, the one with uh, the ivory covers has no title. Uh, did you want to look at the uh, off-white book or the uh, gray book next? The gray book first. Okay. Uh, that one you realize uh, that you wouldn't actually need the read magic to read the title. Uh, and that reads, uh, and you don't recognize what it's written in, but somehow you still understand it. Um and the title is On the Promethean Construction of Gestalt Skeletal Guardians. On the Promethean? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so creating those fire skeletons. That's, that's okay. That, I, that's... Passed this on, I passed this on to Solas. He writes it down. Okay, next book. <laughs> that's better than one of Leftel's titles. Yes. Then the, the other Sorry. one with off-white color covers... Uh, mm -hmm. that one has, uh, again, uh, you realize that you do not actually need the, uh, uh, detect magic to, I mean, the read magic to, uh, understand it. Um, that one has the title, Osteological Cons Constructs and Their Uses. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> All right, so Lemo opens the books and has a quick look inside. Which one do you want to start with? I start, she starts with the ivory plate one. Okay, the one with no cover. All right. Yes. Well, the one with no title. Yes. Sorry, that's mm -hmm. what I meant. All right, uh, so you uh, open that up and look at the first page, correct? Yes. Okay. So you realize that uh, that page apparently has a a spell written on it, and that spell is the eighth level wizard spell demand. Wow. Hmm. High level. Is... Yeah. So is it's it, uh, is it the, the, does Leva conclude from that that this is a spell book? And no, it is not a spell book like you've ever seen before. You think that you could actually cast the spell off that page, similar oh. to using a scroll. Oh, oh. My. so it's just a That's... scroll book. So she she sort of uh, uh, she doesn't actually read, but she opens a random other page. Or oh, actually, she opens the book at the random other page. All right. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you close it and open it again. And you realize that it has stayed at the same page. Do you want to physically yes. choose? Okay. Uh, so you turn a few pages, and you look at the uh, um, page there. 
that one has a spell written on it. And you realize that it is the 8th level wizard spell, Symbol. Interesting. All right, interesting. So she, what, what, she, she actually closes the book for the moment, and she goes on to the second book. Okay. That's the grey book on the Promethean something or other. Okay, so uh, on the Promethean con construction of Gestalt skeletal guardians, uh, you open that up. And you realize that uh, this is a tome uh, designed for creating a specific type of golem. Oh. No, a skeletal golem. Bone golem. Does she see oh, yeah, which type of golem? Uh, you would need to read more to uh, figure out more details about that. No, she doesn't, because uh, she wants to get the uh, have a a close look at the third book as well. Okay. The off-white one. Alright. So, that one also is a tome on the construction of golems, but a different type. Uh -huh. It's a flesh golem. <laughs> Osteological construct, could be, uh, is there such a thing as a bone golem? Uh, you would have to look at it more in more detail to figure out. They're they're both different types of uh, manuals for constructing uh, golems. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, all of a sudden, Leva gets a bit suspicious, and she wants to reopen the ivory book at the first page and see whether the spell is still there, or whether it's actually, because she got, went past it, whether it counts as used up and there's only an empty page. All right, so you're going to try to open the uh, book to I the first page again? Yes. Uh, you find it opening to the fourth page with that spell oh. symbol there. Same spell as it was? Yep. Which is... Uh, okay. Whew. Good. Let's close it and uh, and and put it aside Fair carefully. <laughs> so she passes that on to Solas and says we should keep those three books separate. Mm -hmm. Look after them carefully. Yeah. And decide decide uh, uh, what to do with them. Yeah, it really depends on uh, what content they have. If there are some knowledges that are something that should not be spread around. Mm -hmm. Even even Ogma doesn't want to have dangerous knowledge that can cause. Harm, harm just by knowing it, uh, or wrong people knowing it, uh, to spread so around. Le Le Leva doesn't say anything, but she looks at Sola slightly suspiciously, and she looks at the three books, and, uh, hmm. <laughs> well, uh, we need to study them first if we, <laughs> before we do any determination on what, are they dangerous or not. Mm -hmm. So many words yes, were said, yes, yes. but not by being said. <laughs> yes, 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 we, we, we do. Uh, yes, mm-hmm, fully agree. <laughs> she walks out the door to another room. <laughs> uh, was there any books left for me to go through? Uh, no. Okay. Since the rest of the books were written on that uh, illicit language. Yep. Okay. Uh, one question, old. Mm -hmm. Do I have access to read languages cleric spell? It's a divination first level spell. Uh, are you looking in the spell compendium right now? Yeah. Would not be a. Is, is it? A, is it? What? It, what is it listed as uh, rarity wise? Uh, very rare. Then no. Oh. Okay. So I need to research it. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to research one as well if I'm allowed to get that Okay. To know.
Okay. Okay, I will pack the books uh, carefully in uh, order, basically keeping them uh, the magic books in together and uh, those uh, um, theoretical magic books uh, in one pile and uh, separated by language and pack them up. All right. Are you using the uh, geodecimal system, Solus? The geodecimal system? G- uh, geodecimal. I, th- I think you mean uh, Dewey Decimal system. Yeah, Dewey Decimal. Yeah. Well, I'm using a variation of it. That's from uh, Solas's home home place. But basically the same thing. Okay. I mean, hard to use that with uh, books that you don't know the uh, titles of. True. Well, uh, you can, uh, even if you don't know the title, you can still uh, still uh, classify them with other things. By color. Well, uh, organize instance, organize your shelves by color and and just anger everyone in the world. Or their topic, or something like that. No, 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 color. Color. Gotta do it by color. And anger everyone in the world. (laughs) Alright, there doesn't appear to be anything else uh, in these chambers that you haven't taken. Uh, I I assume that you've taken the the box with the uh, potion vials in them, flasks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Uh, We will uh, most likely also take... uh, Anything useful to our laboratory? Yeah, that's fine. From the lab gear. What did you want to do now? Did you want to head back over to uh, the other chamber with the artifact in it? Mm, didn't uh, Lizard folk last time say that they were uh, discussing uh, before we discussing since uh, uh, we told them that it was basically a helm to move it move this asteroid, so if they wanted to move it before we take it from there. Hmm. If they're even gonna allow us. I mean, you can still go over there and uh, go back to that room if you wanted to, but if, yeah, if there's nothing that you want to do in that room, that's fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're that's not gonna... required to uh, honor them if you choose not to. <laughs> Let me come back to the room with the three a spell books and looks at the book with the ivory cover. Mm-hmm. She picks it up. She says, I think this is for me. This is for me. Oh, even if. Okay. Hmm? What? Nothing. Nothing. So last just the query is a level that uh, you mean uh, it's not uh, your ordinary spell book, huh? No, it's a, it's, it's a spell book for me. For you? Mm-hmm. Wow, I wish I could read spells. Let me, you got a scroll I can read. I could try casting spells. He knows what happened. Are you even there? Yeah, laughter's around. You mean that I can't even Look, check check the contents of the book. Well, you can look, but it's the book is for me. Oh. Okay. So as uh, makes mental note to talk about this with the Leva later on uh, in the library. But uh, I think there isn't that much any more on this level. Right. You guys want to head back up? Uh, there was that one level that had that inv- invisible force field that we couldn't go past. Was it yeah. third level? I think it was the one where we fought the bone dragon. Uh, That's it was true. on the second level. Oh, second level? Yeah. I That's think true. we should go and check check if that forest field is there still that's true um from from our recollections of when we've flown around the outside of this was there any weapon platforms on the other side of that 
um, wall, or would we have to go up again and check? I think there was, but I want to go and check if the wall is still there. Um, if you go and check, the wall will not be there. Okay, then I want to explore the area past that force field. Okay. Yeah, let's go check. Do you actually want okay. me to take you over there, or do you just want me to describe it? Because, uh... Well, There's uh, nothing particularly dangerous there. <laughs> well, you can describe we search the area if there is anything too important in there to find. Okay. Um, so the uh, the wall of force was clearly blocking off uh, um, access to uh, the corridor further on, which uh, was apparently. Uh, led to what used to be more of the mine and stuff like that, but um, was torn out when the uh, uh, that skeletal dragon thing uh, essentially created a, uh, a lair for itself, or was created for it. Um, okay. So there's a... Uh, it overlooks the, the floor itself down below on, on the third level. Um, going past that would lead out to the uh, uh, I-Weapon platforms, one of which uh, was smashed apart and uh, leads further into that lair of the Skeletal Dragon. Okay, so there isn't anything specific in there? No. Okay. It doesn't lead to well, any, uh, anywhere that's really new. Uh, one of the weapon platforms, other than the, uh, the ruined weapons, is relatively intact. The other one has been really smashed. Uh, is there any intact weapons on the platform? No. Just right. No. Uh, is there any ceilings that look dangerous or anything? Uh, you would need dwarves to uh, look okay. at that in more depth. Because I know it looked like it looked like there were lots of holes in the. Wall. Yeah, I mean, well, I just mean is should we warn should we warn um, the dwarven crew from the other ship to be careful in that area? Uh, I mean, they weren't planning on coming down there. Yeah, they're repairing their ship. When they weren't they going to check out some stuff uh, in payment for staying there or something? Maybe I forget. Uh, that, that's, <laughs> I actually that's forget. up to the that's up to the dwarves and uh, yeah 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 yeah. But I, no I, no actually no they were going to be uh, uh, doing some basic repairs on the upper levels not the down not right. down the mines. Got ya. Okay, fair enough. I obviously misunderstood that because I know there was a couple of staircases that caved in and stuff. Yeah no that's all on the upper level stuff. Okay cool. All right. All right. Back up to the uh, main level. Mm-hmm. All right. I guess. Well, so Laftel sneakily plots to go on the uh, the Arta Furnace and crashes into the sun because it's so chaotic neutral. Mm. <laughs> that would be more of chaotic evil. Chaotic suicidal, myself. perhaps. All right, so you uh, you return up to the main level, and uh, one of the lizard men uh, fetches uh, Axis over, um, and she arrives to. Uh, See what you have to report. Well, we found uh, some burial chamber uh, of uh, Duergar, and uh, there were some traps that we cleared out and uh, golem that we destroyed. But uh, I think uh, downstairs should be cleared out. Yeah, Higamus slain me. I'm not happy with you, Higamus. At, at least we don't uh, don't know. Any other uh, dangers at the moment except uh, the, those uh, rooms with the mold that sucks out all the heat? Yeah, there is that. Is there anything so, we could do to neutralize that? No, not really. At least not with what we have. We tried tried to find out a way, but we couldn't. Can we? Hmm. Uh, those can rooms we... can be blocked off. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say maybe maybe someone could go down with the lizard people so that they oh, can right. block that off. Yeah, we've, any... mark, we've mark, marked the rooms uh, that are dangerous. But uh, the 
down, down stairs main area should be something that you can now now start using if you want. That is good. How easily do you think it could be flooded if necessary? There is not as much water up here as we would like. Well, there are the weapon platforms there, so I think parts of it could be flood, flooded, uh, but the whole area to flo fl flood up would uh, require you to block those uh, weapon platform entrances completely. And uh, there are some larger areas that are uh, broken open. You plan on turning this like the... what's that other ship when I had like a massive pool of water? I'm that's, just wondering if they're trying to do the same thing. That's the point. Well, there were, well lizard there folk were... like to live in uh, watery areas. We to go we for a swim as much as the next guy. We Can't did see there. we did see double doors on some of those weapon weapon platforms, but yeah. But if they uh, want my, to, my concern if, would if, be, if they want to flood it, they should really build a new wall my, in there. My my concern would be if you if you tried to do that and you tried to flood three or four levels, there'd be a tremendous amount of weight on on the doors on the lower level. And if you had a uh, failure, you you could have you could have like a, a rushing of water that sweeps any lizard people swimming around in the water well, out, so, and uh, out, so, out into wild space. Well Solas can go down uh, down there with axes and uh, try to come uh, come up come up with some engineering solution. Is this even our problem, so to speak? Or she just well, asked very general advice? Sorry. Well, uh, I mean, if this uh, helps them to be more uh, agreeable of us taking the relic. Yeah. yeah. I suppose. There's also there's also the fact we'll still be working on repairs on our ship. Yeah. Why don't they uh, go near us, and then we could be like our own little Brawlian empire, and we rise yeah. up against Brawl? And take over that, and become like the masters would, of the sphere. <laughs> no, well, that would that would be um, that would be good for me. I mean, if we if we could um, if we could bring this to near where we are, we could help each other out in time of need. We could no, be trading so partners is, or whatever. So Lars is okay with uh, having these people as trading partners since they seem to be yeah quite quite nice people. But have uh, Axis and the uh, other elders uh, talked about the uh, helm um, and the uh, relic? We are still um, in discussion. Braxton, Braxton turns to Higamus and says, um, you understand the charts a bit better than me. I'm, I'm trying to learn them, but I don't really understand them. Is our asteroid closer to Brow Space's son than this one. Uh, and then he turns to Axis and says, you, 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 like, you like being near the sun, don't you? There's a people. We do not need to be near the sun. We just send our brood ship close by so that the, uh, the heat and the beneficent nature of the sun will produce yeah. stronger, more intelligent offspring. But, but no, but we 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 fairly... we bro we uh, hatch them there on the brood ships. We do not hatch them right. here. Is that but a, a long voyage? Thing? A long or voyage is... or a short voyage for your brood ship? I would think that would make a difference, maybe tactically. Uh, Higmas says, um, it "Only be about twelve hours difference, really." Okay, is our asteroid closer? Is further, further. No, yeah, but we're defensible allies. We can defend each other. Yeah. If they want that. Yeah, if they want that, they might have won that. Right. It would make at least trading between us easier. You say you have an yeah, asteroid that want you would want this citadel moved close by for mutual protection. Yes. Yes. Well, we we get on with each other, don't we? We have recently been granted by this whole sphere owner an asteroid to our own once we liberated and there is some just, do you know of the rock coppers? Re real, real fast just so you know there is no whole sphere owner yeah wow <laughs> the major power I'm of not, the sphere I'm not it's it's basically um, 
we completed a, a mission for the Rock Brow. Do you, do you know of the Rock Brow Axis? We are aware of it, yes. We trade right, there occasionally. So, so um, some pirates were attacking the Rock Brow, and we tracked down the pirates to their base and vanquished the pirates and were told that we could have their base as our own. Just for the uh, benefit of those uh, who want to, you know, understand the uh, political situation, that the the legal situation is more that Brawl will not challenge your ownership. Other people might. Other people yeah. might say, and we don't give a crap what Brawl says. But Brawl yeah, itself yeah. will not challenge the ownership. They've, they've uh, accepted that. And that do also means that, you know, you have, uh, within Brawl's legal system, you have uh, legal rights with regards to what <laughs> happens there. So That that will be the same yeah. if we got that will be we the same if we got island. a letter of mark, wouldn't it? Sort of. I mean, it's a similar kind so of thing. So if we if we got a letter of mark from Brow and we we stopped a ship and said, "Hey, we got a letter of mark from Brow," they go, "We don't care. Right. <laughs> we don't come from Brow." <laughs> it's, it's it's basically that we can say that uh, that asteroid is our personal fiefdom and uh, yeah. anyone cannot. Brawl, Brawl has Brawl. Uh, Brawl has acknowledged. As, that as yeah. our fiefdom, but others can of course try to claim it as their own. Yeah. Yeah. And but anyway, basically we are independent in that. Uh, oh yeah, asteroid. we should tell them about our asteroid. What yeah, if we, we have. What, 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 if, what if we trade? Because our asteroid has a massive lake in it. We yeah, I mean, I they thought, have I thought that was. <laughs> I thought that was water that was brought to us. Do so, you, do you want to? Um, do you want to? Uh, go off and discuss this amongst yourselves before you make this proposal t to them? Yeah, I, I think yeah, we want to keep our own asteroid. That was just a random thought. I don't think No, we're not going to give away our asteroid. No train. Oh. But, uh, but uh, the idea of mutual uh, protective alliance and trade relations yeah. would be at least yeah. uh, good. Uh, Axis yeah. would, would take that, that initial thing about uh, um, moving the Citadel close to your asteroid uh, for, like you said, mutual protection and trade uh, to mm. her, the Council of Elders. Yeah, um, and, yeah. and just just so you know, Axis, there are a few more asteroids in the cluster where we are. There's some rock hoppers that live there. They're quite friendly. So, um, uh, do you have any druids? Maybe we could get some plants growing on some of those asteroids, and then periodically people might want to capture a small comet full of water or ice and tow it in we do not have any druids no okay but i will take yeah. your i will take your offer to the to the elders and we will discuss it thank you um no i mean uh but but laftel brought up something that maybe you do want to consider i mean you for one thing you wouldn't have to uh build out a whole fortress on we a citadel. A and it is powerable. We don't have to return the relic. Uh, we've kind of promised that we return the relic and Solas is intent did on we keeping promise that we... promise. Did we actually make a promise that we would return or is it a case of if you want this, you do that as a trade? Uh, it it is a trade, trade, but uh, Hegemus would be... Yeah, Hegemus promised. Promise. Well, Hig I, just... I mean, H Higum, the, 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 the nature of the promise is, is not one that, you know, I mean, if you never found it, you wouldn't be penalized for it. You just wouldn't get what Higamus wanted. But um, at the same time, Higamus is like, we found it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to return it to them. Yeah. Yeah, Brax and, it's, their, Brax and... their, it's their holy relic, so... Brax, Brax and raises an eyebrow and says... Hang on a minute. I had two of you chewing me out saying that something would be against your honor. And uh, Igos pretty much promised that the company of the Broken Sword would do something. Yeah, but but also so, keep in mind who just proposed this. It's not exactly like this person who proposed it was one of the people chewing you out for it. So Yeah. <laughs> like like all don't all don't all don't all hold all it against uh, you know, mm. like I mean it's well within yeah. Laftel's nature to kind of say, "Well, hey, maybe we should do this thing that's that that may not be right." Yeah. Also, returning uh, returning a 
dwarven religious artifact to its rightful owners would be quite... Uh, I mean, sure, the artifact might be powerful, but uh, it would also garner us quite many friends in the dwarven circles. Yeah, that will get us quite um, quite an amount of kudos. Yeah, but shame it's not the elves. You know, we owe favors to the elves, not dwarves. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I mean, we 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 helped the dwarves before. Um, we we stopped that slavery thing. And if we do this, we could get the dwarven barrio on our side. And when you think of the the council. And there's all those different factions in there that may support us or may stand against us. It could be good to have a faction on our side, mm-hmm. and not because they owe, not because um, we've got something on them, but because you know, have a friend, friendly ally, yeah, and we, not ally, ally, ally out of fear or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can work on the elves because we owe the elves. We can get. I think. I think we should pay back the elves more than Should we owe be. them because mm. i know before someone said something about how much we still owe them i think we should estimate how much we owe them and we owe give three them a bit more of Rod- Rod of resurrection yeah i think rods of resurrection can be made they're gifts given by the gods aren't they? no they can be made would i know can they can I? be made well oh, i don't know yes. maybe maybe we look for leads for binding one of the elves because we paid off one and Yeldon's left, so we and Lever got raised again. So yeah, well, if if Yeldon has left, and we debt, paid off, so that his debt, debt's gone. With the him. debt probably stays with us. Yeah, there's still me in Lever's first resurrection, Lever's second resurrection. Yeah. yeah so and, and in any case, it's the it's it's the group that owes them. It's not. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, say Yeldon yeah. all left all the way Lever. No. Also, um. I, I'm going to bring this up now. Are we casting Restoration on Hegemus? Because it's going to rage too long after this point. Because he lost Constitution. Do we do this or not? We should do, yeah. Yeah, so last is yes. of the Because he is should. part of our group, even if mm-hmm. he has left, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how else to word it. The player has left. Hegemus is not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I mean... Um... The the thing is, is we're all friends with Hegemus, and we would yeah. we would jump yeah. on it. Yes. Yeah, because how many days has it been? Like four, or five, and it's like the limit on one day per level to caster. I think for restoration, we 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 probably should have rested and done that already. But oh, I know because a spell it. failure on that. You've got some time. Don't worry about it for now. How many yeah. days? I I'm I, I I'm I'm perfectly happy to just kind of like hand wave it a little bit if you guys want to discuss it a little bit more um i would say if we have that to do another stuff to the other stuff is not critical um we've got some stuff like looking over the ship and stuff uh that i don't want to clog up the stream with but we could spend a day or so getting rid of mundane stuff like that yeah and casting that spell and, and given that higimus um has this aura about him that eats spells. You, 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 you probably want to prepare the spell oh, more than once. No, our spells <laughs> like stop that. three days, three or four days. Yeah, and there are spells that actually stop someone from resisting magic, but we need to find someone who can do that first. Yeah. No, well, that's fine. It's 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 a it's a good thing. It protects him. I mean, you would have time to get back to brawl uh, to do this. Let me put it that way. Uh, unless Could you I... unless you really you know, dicker around here for a few days. You'd have time to go back to Brawl and get this done. We'll put it that way. Oh, Lever wouldn't mind dickering around for a few days, like three uh, or four days. <laughs> they do have the restoration scroll. Yeah. It's not a well, guarantee I... thing that will work, so... Well, well yeah, I... but uh, it was uh, the one we used to restore Ocker. Oh, if only I had my necklace that made me four levels higher. <laughs> that works in Scrum, doesn't it? Is, is uh, this the, I'd have to go back and look at it. Is this the necklace that your dwarven girlfriend stole? What? Uh, the, the dragon no. girlfriend of yours that she bought. Would you say girlfriend? Because she liked you. 
We have yeah, she liked, him. Just, she liked uh, all of you, which is why she uh, stole from uh, one, one, one person uh, liking another doesn't make it instantly that uh, that person is another significant other. It needs to be mm. mutual. Yeah, I can just but, see that's true. That's true, but... But, but she's oh. wearing his ring. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's symbolic. <laughs> so, uh, I, actually, you don't know that she's wearing the ring. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. So you haven't I'm seen her in, in quite a while. <laughs> So far as you know, so far as you know, um, <laughs> the one that is writing the fanfic, huh? So <laughs> I'm just teasing him because he goes on about that ring so that's, much. That's I, I do. I never even thought about. I, I do want uh, um, you guys to to discuss uh, his idea here, though, of uh, trading asteroids. Essentially, I mean, if if you guys don't want to do it, that's fine too. But I mean. Hang on, it hang was an you idea. Mean trading asteroids. Yeah, that's what he said. Trading oh, we give them ours and we take theirs. Well, yeah. Yeah. He was not saying give them yours and get nothing in return. He he specifically said trade. Because it's got a large body of water as well, and that's right. perfect for them, so to speak. Okay, because the thing... this has got Solas so, so, so prefers to have the asteroid yeah, we have. Well the I thing I was... an asteroid, I don't really want this place. Okay, because the, the thing... Whoa, well, hang on, there's pros and cons both ways. The thing that uh, Braxton was proposing was bringing this asteroid to our asteroid. I mean, you could still do that, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Was, well, let, well let, me get through the whole, let me get yeah. through the whole thing, because I've realized now that we're talking about different things. So so what, what Braxton was talking about was bringing this asteroid into the, the small cluster of asteroids that our asteroid is in, mm -hmm. uh, and not being to right on top of each other but we will be we will be close enough together so that we could come to them if we wanted a trade or they could come to us if they wanted help and that sort of thing um it sounds like laftal's talking about just we bring them to our asteroid give them our asteroid and take this one i uh, mean you could also bring this ooh. one over into that cluster and then do the trade yeah i mean they're, well, they're not I, mutually I exclusive thought... I would have thought we'd do that so that because there's a load of there's a load of people here that need to get to the other place if we were going to sell it. I wasn't thinking about trading our asteroid for their asteroid. Right, I but know he brought it. I'm up. not against it. I'm not against it. I was well. I was thinking we were going to give the artifact back to the dwarves. So I think we've got. And we are coming I mean, back to the dwarves. You can use it first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He used to say we don't use it for a few years and give the. So, do do both of these plans involve moving this asteroid into our asteroid cluster? Well, got so, power so first of all, first of all, I mean, all, all this is is proposals to uh, access, yeah. and you already proposed to her moving this one to you to close proximity to yours uh, for yeah. you know trade and mutual defense. Um, yeah. So she's gone off to to consider that. Um, if you want to also propose trading, you can make that proposal. You don't know. I mean, she may, she may reject both or one or, or the other, yeah. but, uh, there are things to consider. I mean, if we weren't going to keep the artifact and fly around in this thing, I'm not sure that we need a thing this big. Also, I mean, your, also, ast your uh, asteroid is bigger than this. Our asteroid is bigger than this. Your asteroid yeah. is way bigger than this. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, you're really breaking up there, James. Can can you can you disconnect and reconnect to see if that fixes it? I say you've been quiet for like last hour, so I don't even know how long that's been going on for. No, he said he 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 spoke and it was pretty clear. A few minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. Our asteroid has been is a whole lot bigger and has a lot more potential than this place. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, for instance, we are currently making the our asteroid have a plant life on its own. This I basically. Just I mean, it would be almost ready made citadel. We would have to fix quite a lot and rebuild quite a lot of it. I'd rather build our own place from the ground up than uh, yeah. repair an old mm. place. 
I mean, this place yeah, would, be, right. would be cheaper to repair something than to build something new. Yeah, but yeah. to be, but uh, when we build it, we can uh, design it how we like. That's something that's well, truly ours. Well, hang on. Unless you're actually going to employ dwarves to dig tunnels for weapon platforms and hollow out an asteroid, you're going to be talking about putting sheds on the top of one. Well, probably not sheds unless you're really cheaping out. <laughs> yeah, hey, but... hey, hey. <laughs> we're we're going to be earning money through our adventures and stuff. Yeah. I know, we, but, uh, but um, refuse to take money. You know, well, what what you have like... in this one, what you have in this one that the lizard people are in, inhabiting, is you have multiple pre-built levels, some of which are damaged that would need repairing. Um, you've got built-in churches and stuff like that that've been desecrated that could be cleared out. There's enough people here with different religions. We could have one of those holy rooms for everyone, if they want one. And for, if we've got people in the crew, we could have generic things and stuff like that. In our other place, we've already spent a lot of effort transforming it. So the the question is, is there really a need for us to drop the other place that we've half built? I'd, well, I'd rather keep with the place that we're already building and to, uh, yeah. finish it. To, to be clear, uh, you haven't half built the other one. You have maybe 5% uh, built. Maybe okay. not even that. I mean... Like, it's it's expensive. Yeah. So I just, right, just to be so, clear, so... You, you you are not with the other one. You are not well on your way to having a uh, you know a fortress kind of thing. You are a couple steps on the road. <laughs> right. this, this would be easy to get a fortress, but the other is a long term better option. Yeah, and I prefer the long-term better option. Um, well, hang on, because I've got a question. Um, we went with the Battle Dolphin ship, which is quite big and clunky. Um, are there any parts of this asteroid that could be opened enough to get that inside? You mean our own asteroid? Oh, no, this new one. Battle. The new one. It won't fit in our other one unless we make massive holes in it. No, but you've got a, there's docks here already. So there's docks here already. There's yeah. there was an improvised dock on the other one that they were building, putting yeah. for building materials. So this one is this one's further done, and we could seal off areas. And if we employ people or get supplies, we have masses of room to put things. But we would have to. The thing is that uh, uh, I haven't seen that much. Uh, that much uh, plant life, for uh, example, on here and at the uh, places to build uh, water That's reservoirs true. and such. That's Whereas true, but we, if, if we you... already have done those on the other asteroid. Yes, yes, but if you think about the money we've invested in the other thing to start off something, um, if if we had our own druid <laughs> and we have a, we have a druid we've been hanging around with, we could carry on that sort of process ourselves as we went along. I'd be more than happy to help you with that. Yeah. So, um, what was the what was the top of this asteroid like? Or would we be able to put plants on it? Um, it had a uh, a peaked roof with a um, the chimneys from the uh, forge area. Yeah. Uh, and at, at the very center was a uh, enormous dwarven hand holding a weapon of some sort. I can't remember. Uh, which one? I'd have to go back and look at the, my description. It was either yeah. a sword or an is axe. That, but it was damaged. Is that accessible? It was or... damaged. It's, it's, yeah, there's there's ladders up to that part. Um, it just didn't have right. any heavy weapons, so I didn't bother making it. A, a How map about the weapon platforms? Could we use those as giant window boxes in the first instance? Most of them are pretty big, yeah. Yeah, so we've got a lot of surface area here. So I, I don't know whether the lizard people want to go to the other place, because it's quite cramped compared to this one. But they're sort of Floating around in in here, it's, it's cramped. And they want... uh, it's cramped because it's uh, still unfinished, but like old. Uh, yes. it, it is bigger than this citadel. Yeah, they're floating around in here. They might fit in our one, and and there's a lake which they might enjoy. Um, how about their um? How about their ships? Would would they fit into that? You know the the when we had the special ship, 
that we were chasing, the, the, the shark ship? Uh, the bloat fly would absolutely fit inside. Um, the wasps, probably not easily. So this would be perfect for the bloat flies because they could bring the bloat flies in and out through that asteroid. If that hasn't been modified yet, that would be a great, great thing they could use that would be ideal for their race because they go underwater. I mean, it's, it's, it's our, it has been modified a bit to make it, because uh, the, the old way um, had to, you had to submerge for the most part to get in. Uh, and yeah. it has already been modified so that you that something of similar size does not need to do that. Yeah. But your um, most of your ships, I mean, your your the battle dolphin is too tall. Uh, yeah. And but the uh, the shuttle could already fit in. Yeah. Oka. Okay. Oka. Okay. Is he is he there? Is he cut off? I mean, he's in uh, chat. Is Braxton. James? James? Uh, well, I was going to say something to him, but if he's dropped out, hmm. Braxton? Yeah. Uh, there's one thing we didn't uh, actually take into account, and that is that you reminded me with the lake. Our neighbors want access to the lake, and we uh, essentially told them they have access to the lake, uh, to the water on our asteroid. So the that's true. Should, should more or less stay where it is, and not be. That's moved. true. No, I wasn't. I wasn't talking about moving that asteroid out. I okay. was talking about bringing this one in. Yeah, and that, we, uh, have, we have a bigger uh, family. So, but so if, you're... If, if the others, if the lizards want to go, the want to have the asteroids, we must tell them that uh, the, yes. the neighbors are allowed to take the water. Yes, you're very, and you're that, very that right. That might be something that is not. Uh... Hmm. Something that Lisa. Well, well, hang on, hang on. We just say there's a third party here, the Rock Coppers, and they have access to to water. And occasionally, we could get someone to tow in a comet full of water or something, every mm -hmm. so often. Mm -hmm. And then we got access to it. They've got access to it. it. As long as they're topped up and they've got what we what we need and that what they need and excess. They might be happy to give water every so often, and I don't know if you've got—I don't know if you uh, clerical people have got any magical spells that can summon water. I mean, Higimus makes water every so often. Sure, come. He could—he could pop in there and go have some water. I mean, it, it seems like we could have a friendship with some groups that. You know, there's a mutual interest. Yeah, well, yeah, but we can so, have the so, friendship without trading the asteroid. Also, also, I mean, there's a couple different things that you can propose. You can, you, you've already proposed moving uh, the Citadel close to your asteroid for m multiple reasons. You can say, yeah. you can go to her and say, in addition to that, uh, there's the potential for trading places. We take over this, you take over that. Um, yeah. Now there does seem to be some resistance to that idea. Uh, I mean, and and part of the whole thing is, you know, I mean, if you bring this close by, they're they're going to want access to the water on your asteroid as well. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say to Oka, I don't know if he's back yet. I'm back. He's... Sorry, I really had to get to the bathroom. No, no, no. That's that's fine. That's fine. All right. So Braxton turns to Oka and says, "What well, one thing I've realized? You make armor. This place has forges. They're shut down." But you have facilities here to make armor, yeah. Well, and he turns, I... he turns, he turns the lever and says, "You want to do magical research? We had a problem on our ship with when it was it was an accident. Someone got hurt. There's plenty of room here. We could have the the lower floor for you spellcasters to have your own research areas. We give you all individual areas so that if you do experiments that are dangerous, we just tell everyone." They're not allowed on the ground floor. Yeah? If we took this place, there's good stuff here for everyone. We could have a whole library here. You'd never fill this place up with books. I, I mean... never. There's a solar star group. <laughs> <laughs> Give them a challenge. They'll make it happen one day. And but it, it wasn't my idea. My own it books. wasn't my idea, but... It, it wasn't my idea, but... This place could be really useful for us. We could seal off... We could seal off the bits that we're not using. We can use all the weapon platforms that we're not using as weapon platforms to grow plants, 
to make air, to make food. And well, then yeah. there's just like no potential in this place. It's ready now for us to use. Oh, we'd have to ask Gigamus if he's okay. Uh, since he made that deal regarding all that mm -hmm. stuff and uh, getting the we artifact could, back. We could we could still take the artifact back if we took this. If we, if we, if you guys, if you guys can figure out how to move this thing better than me, and um, and we we go to the lizard people and we get everything tied down, we make sure our ships not touching this thing. We make sure their ships are loose. Yeah, we can tow over the ship they've got with the um, the helm they can't use because it hurts people. We can tow that ship with our ship. We could slowly move this into our asteroid cluster. If Axis wants to be friends with our rock hoppers and she's agreeable to the deal that they have access for water, if we take her over to our place, see if she likes it. If she wants to trade, if the if the Council of Lizard people want to change, it seems like a win-win deal to me. Why don't we, we, can, why don't we, go, why don't we go through and, and ask... Uh, everyone individually uh whether they you know what what their feelings are whether they would vote for or against or whether there's something that that it's could be done idea. to convince uh so braxton um okay are I you vote for it for, i i i'm for all three things i'm for moving this asteroid to our cluster i'm for uh proposing to access that we can talk to the rock hoppers and see if they're agreeable for the lizard people where we were uh, with the understanding that they've got access to the water supply. And I'm for taking out the uh, magical device and returning it to the dwarves so that All right. real, real we fast. fulfill our agreement. Real fast. Uh, number one, uh, I, I think it's perfectly reasonable we can stipulate that uh, if there is a trade, if everyone agree, you know, if there's an agreement for, for trading uh, places, that the rock hopper, you know, part of it would be that the rock hoppers have to continue to get access, and that's that's conditional, you know, like that. I mean, that's yeah, that's not conditional. Um, yeah. Well, I'm just saying I'm voting for all three things. So right. I don't need to say anything. Else. So, uh, just in and, case, and just also, in case some people hang on something. Higmus is, would point out that I mean, so far as you guys know, you can move this thing someplace and then take the uh, artifact out. Yeah. So I mean, he, I'm, he sees I'm no assuming reason. it would burn up. He sees no reason why, uh, like, if it's been the way that it has been now, and if it got the Citadel here into Brawl Space from Forge Space, another few days to move this uh, uh, asteroid, you know, the Citadel someplace else, you could do that and then take the uh, artifact out. He he has no problem. I mean, like, he doesn't feel that that would. Uh, impact his uh, his goals, his promise, at all. So, um, Solus, what do you feel? Uh, I'm I'm okay using the artifact to move this place and uh, the establishing relationships with the lizard folk, but I prefer the asteroid we have. All right, why? I prefer it because it uh, allows us a uh, lot more, uh, basically, say in how we design our base, since it's a, uh, since it it doesn't require us to basically um, change our plans based on uh, what are the existing buildings. Okay, is there anything that could sway your point of view, or you're pretty firm on that? Mm, I don't know if someone figures out something that might persuade me. Okay. Uh, Ocker? Uh, honestly, I do like how the freedom of the asteroid, but after listening to Braxton, then I'm kind of getting a bit more sway into, uh, into doing a trade. I do like having an idea of having have my own floor for like forging and stuff uh i'm 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 a bit conflicted at the moment but i'm kind I mean, of trying towards it i mean nothing prevents uh, building forges in the 
our new ast our own asteroid. Yeah, but I'm also seeing the argument of it taking a whole long time and a lot of money. All right, uh, Leva. Leva likes this uh, city. That she she likes to be here, and she thinks it's an ideal place, and she'd like to stay on this instead of the asteroid. As, and she's all in favor, like uh, essentially the same as uh, as Braxton uh, pointed out. Okay, uh, Laffle. Not gonna ask Fennel. I guess it's... I'm gonna come back. Oh. He's he's uh, the newest member of the group anyway, so. I guess I've kind of turned around against my own idea. Actually, weirdly enough, it's it's not surprising anyone. <laughs> are you um, are you saying you sold me on the idea and now you're gonna sell me against the idea? Yeah, it's because of the idea. The fact that we can move it that was the big thing for me. The fact that we're returning the artifact, eh, not so much now. It's just smaller than our asteroid. You 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 really think that, like, it's keeping the artifacts is what's selling it to me. But that's a really well, then hard why negotiable. Don't, why don't you vote in favour of keeping the artifact and see how how many people vote against you on that aspect? Because Braxton's against you on that, and I think Hickabus is against you. But I don't yeah. think everyone else has expressed the preference either way. Uh, I like the idea. Uh, has expressed the uh, interest of returning the artifact to dwarves. Leva would love to keep the, the artifact and be able to move the citadel to where. I like the idea. I want to fulfill the mission that we were given and get Higamus the, uh, the reward. Aren't artifact furnaces like extraordinarily rare? Like. Maybe one per sphere. Uh, if you're lucky. Probably not even one per sphere. Um, but this is like so unique. There's nothing bigger than this, other than like the, the so-called spell jammer. There's also uh, stories that uh, um, the curses that apply to uh, uh, the artifacts are visited upon those who would use them for such a crass thing. Like, artifacts are usually tied to extraordinarily powerful individuals, i.e. gods. And how would you feel if you were a, a god and you created, you know, this artifact, or there is this artifact connected to you, and someone just uses it to drive a vehicle around space? That's what Aravan would do. <laughs> He doesn't care. <laughs> He'd steal he would, someone else. He would absolutely no, care. That? It's not, he it's would not absolutely care. I'm <laughs> making a joke. It's not the artifact I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. I'd you rather... Know, uh, I don't mind keeping the base, but I'd rather return the artifact back to the people I... who put it in here in the first place. Higamus, mm -hmm. Higamus, in favor of Higamus would, would tell you that uh, uh, he is absolutely 100% determined to return the artifact. And uh, I'm with you miss on this. Whatever yeah. happens. Mm. Alright, yeah, then I'd rather... I'm definitely in with keeping our asteroid. I prefer the option of keeping our asteroid then. If, if it can't move, then, yeah, our asteroid's bigger and better. Eventually. Then, right. uh, I guess I'll go with uh, laugh on it then. Okay. You, well, you don't need to change your mind just because he wants it's to keep It's the fact that we can't move this. We're not going to have, like, another way of powering yeah. this thing. Uh, I don't mind bringing them towards our asteroid for mutual protection, but the more I'm thinking about I'm flip flopping between it a lot, but. So, so real fast. Uh, real at fast. the bottom of it, I think I'm going to go, say, with our asteroid. Uh, real fast. Uh, it is possible to move this without an Arta Furnace. Uh, it's just it can't move at spell jamming speed, so it's slow. Yeah. Oh, Does the artifact allow it to me if it's spell jamming speed? Well, you don't know that for sure, but I mean, the fact that it was I able see. to get out of uh, one crystal sphere yeah. into another, which theoretically is not possible. Uh, I say we give it a go. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome to see this thing move? Well, the lizard folk are not going to be happy about us moving it suddenly. We don't move it without them agreeing. Yeah. But we, I can, mean, it, if we're going to give that artifact back. We have a we have an opportunity to use it for our own good, in a way that would benefit us and benefit our lizard people friends 
if they want to come with us. And the fact that we're bringing them to our place for mutual protection might convince them to give up the asteroid. And the thing about swapping asteroids, if you're if everyone's against it, which I'm not sure they are, but if everyone voted against it, we could always consider that later. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always a consideration for later. We don't have to make the deal for trading now. Yeah. Yeah. We can do more development but, but on just, the asteroid and decide later if it's worth it or not. I mean, part I'm of it, is, part of it, at... part of it is that like I haven't given you any full prices on what you want to do with the asteroid because I don't know what you want to do with the asteroid. You know, I I, I need yeah. to know what is actually going to be built and changed to then start pricing it out. Yeah. That uh, would involve that we have to sit down and think about this. Yeah. Yeah, and this has got pretty fun deck plans. That needs at least three or four <laughs> se game sessions. Well, no, I want that done uh, off <laughs> out, off session so that I can basically, you know, come back in and say, all right, you've, you've given me the plans, it's going to cost this much amount, and uh, now you need to work for that. So, But yes, you can definitely trade later. I mean, you've already proposed moving. And does, is anyone opposed to moving this asteroid close to your, the, the Citadel close to your asteroid? I'm no. not opposed to it at all. No one else. Uh, I think I think we have a good uh, relationship with these uh, lizard folk. Okay. Uh, yeah. Finn, do you have any uh, things to uh, add? Oh, well, I've never even seen this asteroid of yours, <laughs> so I don't really have an opinion there either way. Okay. Big in, Rock has green on in it. In general, Finn, what, what are your plans green. for the future? Would you like to stay with us? Perhaps. Perhaps wander. Continue my wanders, looking for nature. We have well, uh, we have asteroid that uh, could use druid uh, to we have enhance it. its uh, plant growth and. Uh, Don't we have a druid working for us for that? Yeah, we have. We're paying him. Yeah, but uh, yeah. there could be another druid. Yeah, okay, he, so uh, he, he has to stay there. So I don't think Finn will come with us just to say at the asteroid and then they, no, they no, will participate it, it, with in our well, 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 if also if Finn is uh, wanting to wander around, we are also adventuring group. So yeah, there's gonna um, be downtime so... when people are on brawl. So during that downtime when people are on brawl doing spell research or whatever, Finn could be on right. an asteroid growing. Braxton's Braxton's gonna briefly describe the asteroid cluster to Finn. And mm -hmm. say how um, there's rock hoppers around. There's a bunch of asteroids that don't have anyone living on. They might be places where you know you could go and do your druidy stuff on a on a natural asteroid that has been messed around with. And, and that would all be that would all be within the area of uh, our old asteroid and this one. So you you don't have to make a decision now either. Uh, if if you were okay with coming with us, you could have a look and see if see if uh, you fancy staying with us and our sort of family <laughs> of lizard people and rock hoppers. I think I would like to see what you've got going on there. Okay. Uh, well, it sounds like there's too many people opposed right now, at least, to uh, propose a trade to Axis. That has not mm -hmm. actually been proposed to her, only the moving uh, the Citadel into close proximity of your yes. asteroid has been. All right. And establishing diplomatic relationships. Yeah, that's kind of a given. Um, so I will say that... Uh, uh, okay, so you guys don't propose that to her. You just wait for her answer on uh, what her... Uh, their council of elders has to say uh, and yeah, she yeah. comes to you um, sometime later to uh, tell you what they've decided um, and she meets with you on your ship uh, probably in your uh, mess hall uh, during that time I've used my healing spells to heal people yeah, I mean, you, you guys are going to get uh, fully healed up before anything major happens, so it's fine. You, can, you can guys can just set yourself at full hit points, it's fine. Um, who, who is against this that I need to around? <laughs> well, I mean, Solus, Laftal, and um, Ocker yeah. are kind of against... Uh, ba basi basically, Solas is, uh, basically, Solas is against is, is, 
against it because he sees the long-term potential on the asteroid we already have. Yeah. Th this would be a quick step forward, but uh, long-term potential is much smaller. He knows we could have families on there, it's big enough. We could make it a colony. So, I mean, yeah. the thing is, is, uh, um... You can always do this. You can always propose a trade later. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just thinking that uh, Braxton's got to think of. He's gonna like think of getting the deck plans for this asteroid and mm. writing the word library on rooms and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> stick it. You've got to make sure you notes. nice embellishment and like yeah. embroidery on the word. Library. I mean, uh, I mean you. No, that Solas has already made multiple different potential uh, building plans and such for the our own asteroid. Yeah, but think of all the collapsed walls and things that Solas could repair here. All right, let's uh, let's yeah. that discuss cool. that later. That Axis has arrived to uh, let you know what uh, her council has decided, uh, and mm -hmm. we need to wrap up the uh, session anyway. Um, so she. Uh, uh, arrives, you uh, uh, meet with her and she says I have spoken with the with my elders and they are interested in this idea of moving uh, this whole citadel to a place that may have some better ties with people who we could call on for aid and trade and things of that nature. Uh, we think that you have shown yourselves to be worthy friends and we would agree to this proposal of moving however we are concerned about potential damage um, would it be possible mm -hmm. to have some time to secure all of our possessions and prevent anything else from being damaged in the process yes yeah of I, I think yeah. we don't we don't have to do it uh, immediately we plan on going back to brawl then we can just return here because uh, well, hang on, because didn't, didn't the, thing with the, the, thing with, the thing with the artifact needs to be done after we've moved this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking good yeah, to but, come uh, back uh, here. That gives them time to sort stuff out. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Lavdel was meaning uh, us going to Brawl, basically restoring Higi Muster. Yeah, Braxton says back. that Braxton says access. The other thing I would say is you have one ship with a helm that is an unpleasant one. Uh, we could perhaps tow that ship for you so that you could separate it from here and we'll all travel in a fleet. And then maybe later you can find a way to trade that unpleasant helm for a better one. Yes, uh, I mean, our, our... That would be uh, quite reasonable. And, uh, and we could we could also we could also you've got your bloat fly ships and there's our ships we could take we could take extra people off of here and put them on the ships just in case anything uh, happened. One question, old. Mm -hmm. uh, is our asteroid closer to Bral than uh, this citadel is? It's not. It's twelve hours. Higgins said. No, it's twelve hours farther from the sun. Is what he said. Yeah. Um, it is, it is a little bit closer to Brawl from where you are so, right now. So it would basically benefit uh, also if they want to trade with Brawl. Yeah, but it's still fairly marginal. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be too close. Just a few hours kind yeah. of thing. No, um, we aren't too close. So I she, think... she says, we would need... Uh, a few days to prepare um, there if that is uh, suitable for you yeah, yeah. Suitable. did you want to do that thing on Higamus and come back here yeah it would take us a few days at least to go to Bral and back it's better we hire like a higher level priest that won't fail the screw yeah okay all right. Uh, so, could Axis do something with that scroll? Is she? Well, no, she's lower level. Axis? She's lower level. Okay. She's yeah. Not 
She's like well, Braxton, six or seven, isn't she? Bra Braxton says, I could ask the favour of my church. Uh, my church uh, is pretty powerful. I mean, you can, you can definitely do so, but uh, we'll we'll leave that until uh, next time. I do want to let you know that uh, Higamus lost two points of Constitution. Mm. And two restorations. Higamus would accept as a reasonable thing uh, the one restoration and the belt. that Braxton is currently using. The girdle. Oh, the girdle, yeah. yeah. Oh, so we got to pay for more. Well, no, I mean, you just do one restoration and get the and, and he takes the girdle. Uh, it's indeed. something to consider. It's up to you guys. Um, but that would be reasonable. That would get him well, back we to do have one. We do have one restoration on the scroll. Right, but well, hang that's... On, hang hold, on. hold on, hold on. What yeah, I mean sorry. is that one restoration and the girdle would get him back up to his old constitution and he would be ex that he would find that acceptable it's something for you guys to consider for next week well he'd lose christmas yeah i mean Bra braxton would be okay uh giving or lending the girdle to Higamus, but wouldn't it be better to fix him it would be but it would be more expensive so like it it's up to you guys but, but, but it's something lose... to consider okay. for next you know, to, to think about it. It's okay. up to you guys. Um, okay. if, if you guys insist on getting two restoration spells cast on him, that's fine too. I'm just yeah. saying that he would be, he would find this an acceptable alternative. Bra Braxton would suggest that to so. two restorations. No, I mean, if we come there to voting, it, it's also kind of about like cost and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, Let's see. Um, experience this end of campaign. I'm sorry. Is this end of campaign yet, or is this when we've turned it to dwarf force? Dwarf <laughs> space. Force space. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, old. Yeah. We're not sponsored I... by dwarf and forge. Oh, we're not at the end of the I... adventure yet. No. Yeah. If that's what your question is. Yes, also. I will uh, cast cure disease and cure uh, poison on uh, Laftel just out of uh, precaution. What? Okay. Hey, I'm invisible. He can still touch you. I don't know about it. And are actually, you, do I? Are do you I? Still invisible, uh, I the you haven't felt anything, but he, he, if he wants to cast those spells and uh, for... You, I, I just want to know why. Do, did you have those memorized? I have. I've got cure poison, obviously, but neutralize poison. But... I, I, will, uh, I will cast, cast them uh, out of Concerned that uh, one of the rats uh, might have been a plague carrier or some other. Yeah. How how do you know they're a plague carrier? Well, rats, are are known, rats are known to carry how? disease. Is he rats telling are me that well plague? known to carry disease? And I know that one of the rats uh, beat you. You don't know that means you never saw the combat. I regenerate the wind. I saw combat and I heard you. Uh, I I you I think. It. I, think I don't he mind. Said he was doing I it. don't care. If you also know he does it. Okay. I think he said he was doing it, not talking to you yeah. about it. Well, if he's insisting, I might object. But if it's yeah. just out of precaution. Wow, it's it's so generous of you. You know, I'm I'm touched by the sudden generosity. All right, uh, everyone receives uh, one thousand four hundred experience points. Ocker and Solus get 400 extra experience points, and Laftel gets 200 extra experience points. So it's 1,400 and an extra 400? Yep. I got an extra 200. That 400 is uh, the ball. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just blanket. It's it's added in normally. It's not to one okay. specific class or another. Okay. Hang on, what? I get fourteen hundred to both of my classes. I get an extra two hundred to both you, of my classes. You well. get yes, you got sixteen hundred total. Oh, yes. And uh Solus and Ocker get eighteen hundred total. Everyone else gets fourteen hundred. And we don't see really well. So close to leveling up. Mm. I feel yeah, I'm not. Alright. No one leveling up, I don't I assume. 
I don't think anyone is quite that close. Nope. I need uh, about 700 for my mage. 21,000. Alright. Well, uh, when we come back next time, uh, we will... Uh, sounds like we'll be paying a quick visit to Brawl and then coming back here to uh, move the Citadel itself. That's going to be Assuming fun. we can find it. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you want to go down and lock that, you know, try to hide the uh, secret passage and stuff like that, you're welcome to do so. But uh, that is up to you. Anyway, that will be next time. Thanks for playing, everyone, and it. thanks everyone out there for watching. I really do appreciate it. See you next time, everyone. See ya. See ya. Thanks for the game. Take care. Thanks for watching.